on there. Okay, so here we go. So hello everybody, welcome to the Abu Facebook group, um, especially to any new members we've got out there. It's lovely to have you here and welcome to our Friday lunchtime learning session with the wonderful Dr. Anne Whitehouse, who I'm absolutely delighted to have on today. So let me just tell you a little bit about Anne. So Anne is the author of this fantastic book. Um, it's called Pull Back Your Power, the groundbreaking code to unlocking profound confidence and soaring success for aspirational women. And it really is an extraordinary book that I was very proud to publish. Um, but let me tell you about Anne, because she has a PhD in metal matrix composites um, from the world-renowned Cambridge University, which is, um, I, I mean, not extraordinary, but a very interesting background to come from, given what she does now. So Anne's a scientist turned life alchemist. Um, wonderful, uh, wonderful title. Um, and Anne came up against the boys club and actually you, you burnt out, didn't you, Anne? I mean, that's, I that's certainly a did story. spectacularly. <laughs> so, so take it from there. What, what happened after you, after you burnt out? Well, basically I ended up going from high powered academic to burnt out invalid in six years, lost my scientific career altogether. And I was left with the choice of do I just give up? Is this my life now? Because it basically turned into chronic fatigue or do I decide to do something about it? And so what I ended up doing to cut a very long story short is analyzing what goes on subconsciously to really to disempower women when we get out there in the world. So initially I looked at myself, but I was soon working with other women from all kinds of professions and the same pattern was happening again and again. And what I found was a particular mechanism that goes on under the surface, that undermines us, pulls the rug out from us, and leads to things like burnout and holding back and imposter syndrome and all of these things that we talk about such a lot. So all of those discoveries all went into my book, Pull Back Your Power, where I was literally presenting the, the, the understanding of what's happening and what we can do about that. But we don't, because so many people just talk about it as if there's nothing we can do and talk about changing things on the surface and, oh, you know, oh, this has happened again kind of thing. But what I'm saying is actually, no, there's something we can do about it because when we can change this reaction we have, all that stuff goes on in the world, but we are no longer going to be affected by it. We are then, it's like water off the duck's back. So that is really how, <clears throat> how I came into uh, Lu Lucy's community, how I ended up uh, publishing my, my uh, life's work in, in this book. And it kind of leads on to what we're going to talk about today, which is visibility fears. And is, so, it, is it definitely, um, is, it, is it very clear to you that as women, we have, we have this particular lack of confidence, we, we have a problem with being visible, and what's your, um, what's your underlying um, theory about this? Well, they're, they're, we, what we have are a whole load of literal programmes obsolete programs, patriarchal programs that are sitting there churning away in the, under the surface in our own subconscious minds, in the minds of everybody else, in our institutions, in the automatic knee-jerk reactions of people. And you know, we talk about this in terms of, oh, the double standard and all that kind of thing, and the gender confidence gap and the gender pay gap. These are all the physical manifestations of this underneath patriarchal stuff which is still going on. Now, Shall I talk specifically in terms of writing and how it relates? I think that would be really helpful. Yes, do. That would be great. So <clears throat> here's the thing. Your subconscious is holding on to so many beliefs, ancient, obsolete, archaic, invalid <laughs> beliefs around all this stuff. But your subconscious does not know that it's obsolete. It thinks it's all current. OK, so whenever you have a woman who is putting herself out there, putting herself in the public eye as a leader, as an authority, outshining men, 
taking on a man's career, which is in fact anything that is not kind of midwife, nurse, cleaner or tea lady in the subconscious realm. <laughs> Everything else is labeled as man's work. <clears throat> what happens is that she begins to, to violate these subconscious rules. So your subconscious is going to, if for any woman having um, a career out there, climbing the ladder, achieving, earning a good salary, all of this stuff, the subconscious is gonna be saying, that's dangerous, it's forbidden, you're not allowed to do that because you're a woman, you're gonna be put to death for it. Really extreme beliefs, really extreme. We would never believe this was going on because we are there pushing forward with our, our dreams, our goals and all the rest of it. <clears throat> so what happens is it triggers our subconscious to say, oh my God, you are in danger. I've got to stop you. I've got to sabotage you. And that's where we start to get the whispered voice. You're not good enough. You know, you're, you're going to be ridiculed. You're going to be attacked. You're a target, all the rest of it. That is the subconscious sabotage. So all women have that, but <laughs> then you decide to write a book. <laughs> so what we have is, is now a two-pronged problem. When you're writing a book, you, as you know, I mean, I'm talking to the people who understand here, as yeah. you know, you are putting your, your heart, your soul, your life's work, your vulnerabilities, your beliefs, everything that matters to you in here, you're putting it out there onto the page. And any, any old, you know, Tom, Dick or Harry can pick up this book, right? Anybody can comment on it. Anybody can review it or write a, you know, an article attacking what you've done. You can never take it back. It's there forever, right? There is no greater uh, version of being vulnerable in public than writing a book. It just isn't. <clears throat> yeah, then, no, that's, that's true. And that's certainly, you know, that's certainly my experience of working with women, uh, women writing their books, even women authors who publish their books. Sometimes it's absolutely right. there is a real difference between, um, you know, men's attitudes who, who, of course, can be anxious and nervous about writing their book and stuff. But it's it's of a different order it's to, the, different to, the, order. to the anxiety totally. that we feel. It really is. And then you have the second factor that comes in, and that is that. Obviously, when you're writing your book, you also need to be talking about it and growing your audience and making people aware of it and publicizing it, which means doing getting out there online and doing the lives and doing the podcasts and being interviewed. And, you know, there you are on the spot, people actually looking at you. And that triggers all of the visibility online fears. So what we have is on the top. Yes, there are things to be a bit stressed about. Nobody likes being criticized. Nobody likes the idea that you know, your, your, your baby is going to be, you know, have this scrutiny on it and all, all of that. And, and of course there are valid concerns with that, but underneath the subconscious is doing something more extreme. It's saying, you're gonna die. You're going to be tortured. You're gonna to be persecuted. You're gonna be, you know, hangs drawn, quartered, if you go down this path. So what it does is it then triggers the visibility fears. Now, what it does is it will send you into a fight or flight. You probably don't realize this is happening at all. And the visibility fears then begin to come out. So we have, um, there are the obvious ones of actually feeling scared about oh my God, what if, <laughs> being really anxious or, or maybe you're on a podcast or you're being interviewed or something and you get all tongue tied, your words come out in the wrong order or you know, that kind of, that's the obvious things. But your subconscious is really sneaky, right? It will be creating all kinds of other blocks, blocks that are not obvious. So that, that is when it will be saying, well, you're not good enough. This is a load of rubbish. You aren't qualified enough. You haven't got the right experience. Everybody else is more qualified than you. You're going to be you know, ridiculed. How dare you put yourself out there like this? All of those not good enough blocks. Are, in my experience, about 90% visibility blocks in disguise. Because if it was safe, if you felt safe to be out there, you feel your value and you, you know it's okay. As soon as your subconscious says it's dangerous, it says, excellent. 
if I tell her she's not good enough, that's going to stop her like nothing else. Then, right. so that's, yeah, no, that's, that's really true, isn't it? It's it's it it is that idea of being of being seen and being vulnerable. And I mean, you know, we've got we've got many reasons to actually feel like that. I mean, in in many places we're not safe, but in fact, online we are. Well, in this situation, we in are situation, technically you know, safe, but exactly. But we so you yeah, feel like it's a, a horrible trolley comment on your post. It's unpleasant. Yes. It hurts. It makes you feel really nasty, but you're not actually being attacked. You're not actually being killed. No, you're, you're no, exactly. Thing. I mean, Debbie says uh, just in the comments here, being tongue tied is one of my fears. I yeah. think you're inside my brain. So, yeah, no, I, I have that, too. I really worry about mm. simply not having the words to say when I'm, you know, sort of in the public arena whether it's on literally on a stage or you know exactly. like this. it's a huge one it's a huge one which, which you know this, this is one of the the very deep subconscious um traumas a kind of a group conscious trauma that women have and that is when we are there and people are looking at us we are actually on trial and this relates yeah. to the persecution of powerful women in the past we are all holding this on, on a group conscious level so when you are there and you're being questioned this lead, kind of leads me into what's actually happening underneath the surface. Shall I go on to that? Yes, yes. I'll just say, um, Araposa says, um, you can say that again. I have something on the burner and I am frozen. Very mm. interesting. Yeah. Right. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad that you're listening because hopefully, you know, <laughs> yes, I can help you to get, get past this. So actually, shall, shall I just very quickly talk a, a little bit about how I was? Compared yes, to I, yeah, I do. Yeah, that I think that would help because people often are astonished when I tell them how <laughs> lacking in confidence I used to be. I mean, I I am definitely an introvert kind of woman. I am. I've never been out there loud, confident, life and soul of the party. Never me at all. So just to to uh, give you some understanding. So I was. Um, I was, I was a university lecturer, so I've spoken at conferences, I've spoken to rooms of hundreds of people. I, I, that that in-person arena, public speaking, I could, I could do that, I was good at that, that was fine. But then the idea that that idea, that extension to going online absolutely freaked me out. So just to give you an example, when I first started doing my, my uh, coaching sessions online, I forget how many years ago it was, but I did it on Skype and I was actually too scared to have the video on and I only had the audio. Can you believe it? Oh, Anne. <laughs> I know. I, mean, I, I laugh. And then when I knew I, I had a, a bigger mission, I wanted to meet more people, and I, I'm going to have to do you know, group online teaching. People can't keep on coming to Leicester. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's a nice place, but there are limitations. Like, I've got to get online. And I was so scared of the idea of having, um, like running a webinar, but uh, bless him, my husband said, right, Anne, this is what we're gonna do. You're in your, in your office, I'm gonna go in the front room, our son can go upstairs, and you are going to run a Zoom call for us to prove that you could do it. That's what I needed <laughs> before I was, wow. I could summon up the courage to, to get and do my first group programme. So th that was before, I've done any of the work I'm going to tell you about, about what, what we can actually do and what's happening. That's so I, I need to understand the difference. And then, of course, I, I was running the group programs. I was doing all the things online and I I'd started to do you know, the, the power work, which I'm going to talk about in a sec. And then I decided to write a book. <laughs> oh, my giddy up. So I started writing in the May. And literally within two or three weeks, the visibility fears had come up. So I'd been fine at that one level, but then writing the book, that extension in, in the exposure and vulnerability, even before I'd written, you know, two chapters, it was like, <laughs> it's like really yeah, huge, absolutely huge. Oh, but gosh. luckily I recognized it for what it is <clears throat> because as, as, I, as I was saying before, all the imposter stuff comes up, but also things like um, this is boring or procrastination yeah. in a big way, or 
I really have to clean behind the fridge. That's far more important than writing my book. That's that they're that that pesky subconscious. That's how it it kind of diverts you. And so all of these things are coming up. And in a way, I was laughing at myself, thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know what you're doing, but you're not going to, you're not going to get me. It's really interesting how you can sort of intellectually, consciously see what's happening, but it, that doesn't actually stop the panic and the fear, That's does it? The problem. That's the problem. So you can be aware of it and you can say, oh, no, you know, I'm, I know that you know, I'm, I'm expanding. I, I know that I'm going to have all this scrutiny, but I'm not going to be put to death. I'm not going to be burnt at the stake. That's really not going to happen in the UK. But... Your, your subconscious doesn't get that. No. And your body does not get that. So it will keep on sabotaging you. So, you know, it will still, it will keep your, your um, that anxiety, it'll keep bringing it up. Your work, you will be tongue tied in that interview. You will be there with the most enormous writer's block, not because the words aren't there, but because your subconscious is saying, there's no way I'm gonna let you write that because as soon as you finish writing it, you're going to be burnt at the stake of being a powerful woman. So yeah, it's that, interesting. So Debbie, um, Debbie says a couple of things. Um, firstly, that she used to be a primary school teacher and created her own persona so she could do her job. And I think that's that's an interesting one. But she also says <laughs> instead of cleaning behind the fridge, she uses dusting on top of the kitchen cupboard as my diversionary <laughs> tactic. So it's interesting that we do, um, you know, if you really clean behind the fridge, it's those sort of, you know, domestic things. They, it sends us back to where, you Send know, where our place, our place should be. Exactly. <laughs> exactly so because you know the subconscious is literally still holding that old benchmark that you really should be in the kitchen supporting the men keeping your eyes downcast and you certainly should not be a powerful leader out there making a statement in the public eye like like an author does you just should not and it, it's literally believing that you are in danger for your life and I say, so for me, uh, what's really interesting is the, 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 the steps of that increased visibility. Because people tend to think, when I fixed it once, it's fixed. No, it's not. Because each time you hit a new level of, oh no, I've, I've equaled my partner in, uh, in status. Oh no, I've, I'm now earning more than my partner. Oh, and, and each time you, you go up or, or, you, know, or you, you get a promotion at work and now you're, you know, in charge of some men or something. And each time the subconscious will say, oh my God, now you've broken these roles. And oh no, you've broken those roles now. And each time it will bring up a new level of I've got to stop her to keep her alive. Yeah. And, and I, I can see it so, so clearly you know, that the, the initial fears of speaking at conferences, enormous, I was like 21 years old, but got, that was fine. Then as, as a lecturer, you know, um, I was, that, that was the authority over men thing. The, the fact that I was there in a man's profession, highly qualified, every single thing in my subconscious said, this is forbidden, you are in danger of your life. And I actually used to say to people, I feel um, I'm going to my execution, just going into work. This, the anxiety was off the scale. I couldn't see why, I couldn't see why. You know, it was, how, you know, how did you discover this, Anne? I'm really fascinated by the, the background work you did to unpack all this and to make yeah. us realise that we're right. we this kind of archetypal, ancestral, um, you know, subconscious fears. Right, good question. So, so I was left in that, in that place of what on earth am I going to do? Why, you know, why has this happened? How can I get my life back? At the time, I had, you know, I had no big mission <laughs> to empower women I just wanted my life back <laughs> that's how it started but the thing is the surface did not add up it didn't add up my reaction the way I felt was so extreme compared with the actual facts what was going on there had to be a hidden factor there had to be some parameter that I wasn't seeing and that soon led me to ask questions like you know, why was I reacting like this why was me speaking up in that meeting feeling like it was the end of the universe. It shouldn't have been. Why, you know, what, what, what did my subconscious think was going on? So I very quickly got into 
and you know, modalities that help you to analyze what's going on, well, to, to test what's going on in your subconscious. And I use forms of kinesiology, back then I did, to, to test. So you can do, um, in fact, um, this is what I, I still teach my students to do, to check whether they're safe or whether they're not safe subconsciously. So you can, you can make a statement. You can say something like, I'm safe and entitled to have this job. And you say, yes, of course I am. And then you can do the muscle testing and it'll be, no, <laughs> you are not safe and entitled to do this job. Yeah, and then if you, if you test, I'm gonna be put to death for this. And you'll think ridiculous. And your, your body will say, yes, I'm gonna be put to death for this. And so it, it shows you just the, the, the huge mismatch between what we consciously know to be the facts and the, the programming that our subconscious minds are actually working on completely different <clears throat> so over time i began to see this this pattern that all of that old belief system was totally running over this and you know, under the surface not just in myself but in all the other people that, that i tested and that was so interesting because you know one person is just one person but when you've worked with over a hundred and you see exactly the same thing every time it's a phenomenon isn't it it's an actual thing it's an actual thing it's i mean interestingly and um, petronilla has just said i try to stop myself so the man in my life should not say i'm too ambitious and some male friends say you set the bar too high that's that's incredible isn't it we hold ourselves back we hold so that our other halves um, <clears throat> we totally do and it's sometimes it is yeah a bit conscious Sometimes we just find ourselves doing it automatically. And yeah, you know, I'm, I'm totally the same. And what, what you find is that either the woman will, it's like, a, it's like an inner glass ceiling or an, an inner setting on your thermostat. When you get to that level, things are going well, but then, oh, you have to kind of sabotage yourself and make sure you don't go over it. Or there are women who just go past. And with them, when you do that, that's when, you'll you'll trigger all kinds of arguments with your partner wow. that's when affairs happen in the relationship because that the power balance is is interrupted so it's very it's, it's fascinating fascinating and all this talk you know this, this power and the and the limits and all of that that's that's all in my book so Fantastic. At least you know, Gosh, about that's that. a whole other yes a whole yeah, other it's, it's interesting a big, it's a big thing but this thing about the 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 limits of our um you know, our, our status is probably the best way to describe it in terms of our career, our status out in the world, what we're doing, the authority we have, the salaries we have, the status we have, all of that, that is still labeled as totally forbidden. And when you start to do the writing thing, <laughs> it is doubly forbidden, doubly forbidden. So, so if we are there, really with our, our mission to get our book out there for you know whatever it is you know we have something important to share we are you know, anybody who is on that path of I'm going to be a writer anybody who's in this group has that that thing inside them I have a book to write it's you know, I really need to get this out there maybe it's a legacy thing maybe it's your story you need to tell maybe it's your expertise to help your business grow but you know it's it's a we were driven to do it aren't we it's not just for fun we're driven yeah but you know, no matter how confident you start off, so, and at some point you'll reach a limit of those visibility fears and they're going to start to <laughs> bubble up and, you know, and you have, that's when, you know, when, when you see women who start off so enthusiastic, then they grind to a halt. This is what's happened. They may think that, oh, I had a writer's block or you know, I just, I just not good enough or maybe it's the wrong time. That's all a smokescreen. It's complete smokescreen because if I were to come along and do my testing on that, that woman, I can guarantee that what would actually be running was, it's not safe for me to write this book. It's all about safety. And so this is the problem with, with um, you know, when, when you do a you know, visibility challenge or whatever it is online, you know, and of course that you're going to be learning valuable things, but, while your subconscious is under the surface saying your life is in danger if you do this, the more you push, the worse it's going to get, the more your subconscious is going to sabotage you and sabotage you. And right. That... So, so the normal kind of, you know, your, your normal, well, I say normal, the things that 
people generally tell you to do just to ignore it and get on with it and um, of course you can do it and put, just push through that, that, that's the wrong answer it's the wrong answer uh, it doesn't work basically it really doesn't work so you can do that superficial stuff and I mean what, what the, the theory is push yourself out of your comfort zone and ultimately it will become comfortable there are some things where that will work. In my experience, and I've had a lot of experience in this, when it comes to this visibility thing, it doesn't work because when your subconscious believes you are in danger, the more you push, the more it will freak out. That's what happened to me in my scientific career. I, I, it would, you know, I, my stress was so high, it turned into panic attacks. I couldn't sleep for you know, weeks at a time. It, it was a disaster. Yeah, the warning signs could not have been more pronounced. They really could not. But what did I do? Ignored them and just went straight back to work. Every time, straight back to work, push, push, push. So what did my subconscious say? It said, enough, you are not going back into that hell hole. You're going to stop. Your life depends on it. I'm going to make you so ill. I don't care that I'm destroying your health. I don't care that I'm throwing away all those years of work. The only thing that matters is getting you to stop doing the dangerous thing. Wow. And it took me like a decade to get my strength back after that. That's so, incredible. And this is, this is, so this is the, the whole point. We can do superficial things and it might get us through one event or two events. But while your subconscious is there getting more and more and more worried, it's going to begin to sabotage you in different ways. It's going to be even more tricky. It's going to start affecting your health. Ultimately, if you push it as, you know, as far as I did because it really believes you are in danger. And the more it keeps you in that fight or flight, the more you are gonna get undermined, you know, your, your happiness, your health, your well-being, your relationships, everything. So you, know, you may push yourself and do that for years and many women do, but the cost is enormous. And you know, it's not good enough, you know, we deserve to have the success and enjoy it, right? Of course, yeah. <laughs> and have our relationships and be, you know, chilled out and relaxed when we're being interviewed and all of these things. We deserve that. We Absolutely. And just to be allowed to be as good as we are. And if that's better than some men, then and maybe better than all men, then right. that's fine. <laughs> right, exactly. So I, mean, I want to emphasize that all of the things you've been talking about, you, you most, most likely have no idea that's what's happening under the surface. You have no, no idea your subconscious believe, believes these things. You are just going to see the result of this chronic fight or flight and every time you step out into a, the, the next level of visibility the next level of impact next level of leadership you're going to trigger a whole load more of you know broken rules and it's going to get worse and worse and so this mismatch between what you're doing and what your subconscious thinks you should be doing gets bigger and bigger and that stress will explode somewhere at some point yeah. so I know that's that's the extreme version but obviously here in, the, in this group, you want to be writing your book, enjoying it, having the process flowing, having it published, getting it out there, you know, doing the, the publicity and enjoying the whole thing and getting the rewards. That's what you want. You don't want to be held back by you know, the, um, the imposter and the stress or the writer's block or all the, all the stuff. You don't want that. You want to be free of that. But of course, without changing your character. Yeah. So what, so what, so what do you do, Anne? What's the, what, what is, right. how do you pull back your power, as, as <laughs> yeah. <it> says? <laughs> right. So here, here's what we're dealing with. We are dealing with a world, both internal and external, which is saying no to what we want to do. And this led me on to, you know, why is it that just changing those beliefs, and I spent lots of years just changing those beliefs, why that didn't really crack it. It was a certain, it did, it did a lot, but it didn't really crack that, that oh, reaction. But you, you know, the one, <laughs> that one that you get. Yeah. Uh, and basically I, what I discovered was that when we are in that fight or flight state, we are, are literally we've given away all our power. Our power is literally drained or sucked out of us. And this is what happens to women out in the world. It's like the, it's as if there is, um, like an electric circuit that we're all plugged into in society and women's power gets drained and men's power gets fed. That's, that's what we've inherited. 
And when our power is draining away from us, we feel less and less and less safe and we get locked into this fight or flight. So we can't change the world, we'd like to, but we can't change it you know, instantaneously. And reprogramming all of our mind is an enormous, enormous job. What we need to do is to make our, mind, our minds and bodies feel safe, which means literally holding our power energetically. So, so that the first understanding, which, which does totally help, is this understanding that the subconscious is overreacting, that you've got all this ancient programming that's going on and you're really not going to be put to death. That awareness, okay, that, that is your first step. And if you do nothing else, I want you to hold that awareness because that absolutely will start turning around that spiral. But the next step is to train your body, literally, to hold your power. So um, when you have a, you know, a belief in your empowerment, which we all have, is not the same thing as holding your power energetically. Have to emphasize this. None of us are you know, weak, subservient, little you know, mice of women. We're not there at all. We are very different. We are empowered, but we are running on empty when it comes to our power because of this patriarchal heritage that we're all dealing with. So what I developed is a, a way of teaching ourselves to retraining our system to hold our power and keep it even when the world is draining it from us. So this could be, so um, whoever it was who talked about, you know, getting tongue tied, that if, if you're in that in, that in situation, you're being looked at, maybe you're being recorded, you're being asked questions, that is a key place where if we, if we measured it, your power is draining away, just like water, you know, going through a sieve. Your, your power is like plummeting. And so that's why you feel totally in danger. And your subconscious is saying, it's not safe to say anything. I've got to be invisible. I've got to be silent. And that's why you can't do the speaking. So you're still going to get those signals, which are going to say, give away your power, you're the breaking of the rules. But, but you can actually train yourself to keep the power despite that. Um, and there's, there's a two-pronged a two approach to it. There is actually building yourself what I call a power foundation. So you're teaching your, 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 your body, your mind to hold the power and, and, um, and for that to be normal as opposed to running on empty like we have for centuries. And then you need the... Um, what to do in an acute situation. So, for example, you are going to be interviewed on your local radio about your book, or you are, you know, you're you're going to be um, interviewed by that newspaper, or you're going to go on that podcast, or you're going to do a Facebook Live on your timeline, and it's going to be public, so <laughs> anybody can listen. Anybody can. And so those are situations where it's a real acute, what I would call it an Achilles heel situation for a woman, where we are, every cell in our body is programmed to give away our power in that situation. And that's why women who are you know, in, in normal life, very confident and, you know, and lucid, you could put them in one of those key situations and they will struggle because yes. suddenly their power gets pulled away so I, you know, I also teach techniques that you can use in those key situations. So you're actually training yourself to hold your power when you get there. So it's this two pronged approach. It's like the acute, oh my God, situation and the um, getting the foundation. And it also, world, yeah. and it also we use that for you know, putting the book out. So, so you'll be thinking about, okay, publication dates or, you know, <laughs> Kindle uh, launch date. And in those situations, because you are, that, that will trigger it. Even if it's not an in-person thing, that will trigger the, oh my God, thing, giving away the power, the fight or flight, the anxiety, all the rest of it. And so what you simply do is to have yourself, imagine yourself in that situation, and then you will be creating the power dynamic you want and training yourself to hold that. 
So it's, you know, literally we are going against or, or counteracting millennia of women having their power drained. So uh, Debbie says, it's so enlightening listening to this and finding out why I feel the need to be small to get tongue tied. Thank you. Um, so it's, that's, uh, it's absolutely true. It's so, I think it's just so enlightening. And I, I mean, you say you give, um, you, you, you go into this in more detail, obviously in your book, and it's a fascinating read. And you also, um, you give the exercises, some of the exercises that you, you've developed to, to, to work on this. But I know, I mean, I've worked with you personally, Anne, and um, I know that you have, I mean, it's almost like kind of, I mean, you call yourself an alchemist and honestly, do. it does kind of feel like magic when you are able to, kind of unpack for each person what is what is driving particularly those fears um oh Doreen just says I I agree with Debbie thought just me um so yeah no, it's obviously hitting hitting a nerve Anne. so um, I mean what uh, have you got um have you got a program coming up that people could um could 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 go on to at the moment what's your what's absolutely so in you know in in the book that was the basic stuff and since then and in what you know Lucy and I did together is I, I've taken it one step further because after I've written the book I got all these women contacting me saying Anne what do I do when yeah <laughs> what's the next step how can you help me sort this out so I actually have uh, in, the, in the book it's the basic pull, pulling back your power which is a, a one step thing but what we in fact do what I train you to do now is to empower all, all of your body you work out where your power is being drained maybe it's the the heart, the throat, maybe it's the stomach, maybe it's all over, all, all of this. So it's, it's a much more detailed, in-depth process than, than it is in the book. So what I've, I've put this together in um, a new training, which is 40 days to double your confidence, uh, brackets in the spotlight. <laughs> so it's, it's like, even if you are an introvert, even if you feel like a target, even if you felt invisible your whole life, even if you are uh, stepping into something which is absolutely huge and you think, oh my God, I cannot do that. This is, this is the thing I, I've discovered. You know, whatever we have achieved in our lives, we've done it without holding our power. We've been, you know, freaking amazing right, to yes. do what we've done. And when you learn to hold that power, create the power foundation and hold it in those key situations, it absolutely changes everything. So I was busy developing all of this while writing my book. <laughs> and you know, from, from how I felt that you know, couple of three or four weeks in to then what I've been able to do since I've published it, you know, Lu Lucy, you know, you've seen what I've done it's, you know, since that. And this is all because I created my power foundation and learnt to change the power flow in those key situations uh, and it's astonishing and, and they're the first time that I actually had my power in one of those Achilles heel situations I was just uh God, it's like so amazing <laughs> so mm -hmm. at the time I would have been about 50 I think and and I, and I was busy just being myself not pretending not faking not hiding, not playing with my coffee spoon or any of that stuff, actually being me and speaking up and expressing my ideas in a, a real, you know, real leadership kind of way. Or in this arena, which was lots of strangers, didn't know a soul there. And it was just so natural and easy. And I felt so relaxed doing it. No, oh, that's part wonderful. of my mind was there saying, Oh my God, Anne, you, you've never felt this before. I mean, I've wow. given good performances. Yeah. I could put on a very good act and with a hell of a lot of practice could, could do the thing. But I had never, never felt just so relaxed being myself in that kind of exposed situation before. I just hadn't. Oh and gosh, that's so phenomenal. absolutely desirable. Yes, no, that's, that's so absolutely. brilliant. So that's the thing, you know, we are used to the struggle. We're used to the battle, you know, especially if you are somebody who is a bit reserved, a bit, a bit introvert, a, a deep thinker, sensitive, empathic, you know, I'm sure we're all in this group together, aren't we, Lizzie? Absolutely. You know, we're, we're used to 
pushing ourselves and fighting through the feelings and the stress and the anxiety and all of the stuff. That is what we consider to be normal and the way it has to be. And I felt like that for years. And even when I started to do all the reprogramming, I still thought that for a woman like me, that's the price I have to pay. If I want the success, I've got to keep pushing through all this wretched, you know, oh my God, yes. it looks so easy for that loud American woman over there. But for me, it's absolute hell. But I just kept on going because I was driven, but it wasn't fun. <laughs> It no, no, it's just that you know, the stress of it and the, the exactly, fear exactly. beforehand, the anxiety, it's horrible. Exactly. And the thing is the thing, it's not your character. It's not. It never was. It's that you haven't been holding your power and that your power has been draining away from you, even sucked, being sucked away from you. And, and when you really needed to get, you know, really needed to be powerful, you've actually been running on absolute empty. Yeah. Oh, look, Michaela's just put the link to your um, Dr. Anne's program, 40 Days to Double Your Confidence in the um, in the um, oh, uh, in the comments. So that that's fantastic. I think it's. Um, in fact, I've, I've actually got a, a launch offer at the moment. So oh, wow. If you want to take advantage of that, it's a whole hundred pounds less. Oh, gosh, that's so, brilliant. Yeah. When, when does that when does that go to Anne? Um, that's for the next couple of weeks. OK, so right. Yes. Yeah. So anybody who wants to work with Anne or go on her um, her 40 days to double your confidence um, um, program. Um, yeah, there's a real severe discount for the next two weeks. <laughs> it's, so it's sign good. up. It's, soon. Good. it's a good one. Yeah. It's, no, that's, so that's so I, I done this this teaching in like in my mastermind groups for, for the last year. And the results I got were phenomenal. I mean, it absolutely blew me away. And in fact, you know, one of uh, one of another one of my ladies is also an author and uh, she's a writing coach and you know, in the online arena and, and she did it and and she went from you know, really really struggling you know she's so talented and great within her community but that getting out there onto the bigger Facebook thing was yeah. really challenging for her and now I see her just doing the lives and being relaxed and what she actually she actually told me that that as she put her power in because she was doing all of this obviously at the same time as doing my training with me that she said that she was just feeling more and more relaxed and it mattered less and less about being absolutely perfect and it mattered less what people thought and she was just there sharing her mission and reaching them she needed to, to reach so it's just wonderful so, so that was the, the, you know, in the mastermind version, but this, the 40 days, this is, um, this is you know, accessible, it's all online, it's all you know, recorded, so you know, it's going to be so much easier, so much more easy for people to, you know, to invest in, to afford, to get them you know, <laughs> to the next level of their, their visibility. Yeah. So that's, that's the, that's the, the, the goal, really, to make this, to get the, the knowledge out there because I don't think there's a single woman on the planet who doesn't need no, to be absolutely. holding her power. Yeah, no, that's so. What? What? Uh, just quickly, what happens over the forty days, Anne? Right. Well, it's it takes that time because we are retraining your system. It's yeah. not a not like that. You can't undo a millennia, <laughs> millennia of stuff like that. So what we're doing is uh, each week you get some some power trainings. And so what this is, is it's step by step teaching you to use your mind to train your subconscious and your, your body to hold your power. And we, I add on it little bit by little bit. So you're, it's not a huge thing one in one go. It's like we're just, you're just doing this. Um, and to start with, you start by um, learning to move power with, with your, your attention, with your focus. So this is, this is kind of like a law of attraction thing to the nth degree and that what you put your focus on is what has the power but in actual fact when you do it with your conscious mind you are actually magnifying the power within your energy field so you can move you can move power around you can work out where you are well i've skipped ahead to the next week so so, so we are um you're, you're learning step by step training your system so it doesn't take a huge amount of time you're just doing this these exercises and gradually building on it over the four weeks and that once you've started that, that's the, the, 
the start of everything. That's then brilliant. we can get into a bit of more of the um, of the theory. And it's really important to know what's going on underneath because that awareness that you have your subconscious has been working on things that aren't true. It's so important to have that conscious understanding to then catch yourself and, oh yes, ah, oh, right. I need to pull my power back here, and that understanding. So you go into a, a real um, an analysis of your life and where, where you're losing power, how that manifests in your body. And, and that, then we go on to um, magnifying the power in those places because it, imagine it, imagine that you've been like a, a flower in the Sahara, your power, like the water is just sucked out. You know, you're, you, you're, you need to replenish it. So there I, we've got, um, I've got several things in there. There's, there's the, the focusing the power, magnifying your power. Then I, I bring in some color alchemy. If you've seen my work before, I, I, I do bring in color bottles and color psychology. And I've also got a fantastic big uh, subconscious clearing to, to shift a whole load of these patriarchal um, beliefs. I, I put that in because every woman needs that. <laughs> every woman needs that. And, um, and then we go on to the power pulling. So you learn to, to pull your power back and that can be in the moment, it can be in advance, it can be from things in the past that created a, a situation, you know, something went really badly and you're then going to freak out the next time you have to do something like that. So you know, that's all of that. And then the, the, in the final week, I teach you how to set up power and to, to create your confidence and holding your power in a particular future event. So wow. if you want to go and give a speech or if you've got you know, a really important interview or your book launch or whatever it is, I teach you how to set it up so you've trained your subconscious to do the work for you in advance, then you can get there, relax, enjoy the occasion and you will just hold your power. So it's a, it's a process that builds on itself. And by the time you get to the end of it, you're gonna have the tools you need to not only feel better in your you know, everyday, everyday power, <laughs> power thing, but also when you really need to perform well, you'll know exactly what to do to, so that you're really in, in the best possible power state when you get there. Oh, that sounds absolutely brilliant. Well, Anne, thank you so much for your time today. Um, I think you've really, um, really touched a few people, um, a few, you know, heartstrings really spoken to, yeah. um, we well, I think probably anybody who's, thing. Who's, who's seen this today, it's inevitable. Um, oh, and think, um, um, that there should be, I made you a PDF. There should be a PDF in oh. the comments as well. So you can download that and it's okay. got all the key points that we've talked about today. Oh, that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much. And if it's not there now, I'll make sure it's there um, very shortly after this. So, Anne, thanks a million. It's My pleasure. Been really um, fantastic talking to you. And I'm sure lots more people will listen to this on the catch up as well. So um, thank you. And um, I'll see everybody next week, same time. And uh, yeah, have a good weekend, everybody. Bye, Anne. Bye, everybody. Bye.